Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the seventh annual and first virtual uh, tree lighting for the CBB Jones Cancer Center. I'd like to thank the entire oncology team for all the amazing work that they do all year for our patients and families. The care that, it, the care that they deliver to patients is second to none and I'm often in awe of the work and caring that is provided every single day. I would also like to thank the member, members of our Cancer Resource Alliance that helps so we can provide additional resources to those in need. Individually, I'd like to thank Amy Freeman for organizing this event, Mr. Joey Clausen from the Panorama View Christmas Tree Farm for the beautiful trees that were donated, Doc McCoy from Doc's Rocks and Gem Mining for serving as chair of the CRA committee, delivering the trees and all the other behind the scenes work that he does to support us throughout the year. Finally, can I just step up, Karen? Finally, I'd like to thank Karen Newberth, artist, and my much better hat for hand painting and donating the ornaments for this year, um, holiday fundraiser. The donations will benefit the CRA that provides additional services for our patients. Thank you. In 2021, with donations to the ARHS Foundation and CRA, we were able to provide $52,000 to patients for additional needs like transportation, nutrition, medical and medication assistance, and utilities, just to name a few. The ability to provide this to families helps decrease the significant financial stress that a cancer diagnosis can bring during one of the most difficult times in their lives. Next up, I'd like to introduce Diane Gates. Diane is a radiation oncology nurse and one of our patients. Thank you in advance, Diane, for providing me with perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. I'm Diane Gates and uh, I'm a nurse. I've been working at the Harvard Medical Center for 26 years, a little over. Uh, up until two years ago, I worked over in the birthing center, but, the, but now I work in radiation therapy. This year's tree lighting ceremony is very meaningful to me this year because now I'm also a cancer survivor. I've always been aware of the cancer center and the good care given and the center's great reputation. And in fact, around 2002, I began donating by payroll deduction to a fundraising campaign that um, they had put out, the foundation had led to buy a new Goodyear accelerator. That seems like a good, a good way to donate money and to, to give back to the community. So um, I kept up that donation by payroll deduction, just a small amount, um, going and, and hardly gave it a second thought. Um, two years ago, I transferred to, to radiation therapy department because it was a good time for a different direction in my career. And I was fortunate to be offered the, job, the position of radiation uh, by my good friend Debbie Shook. Uh, the past few years have been an amazing experience for me as I've learned about cancer care and radiation. Um, I found my teammates to be some of the most caring, compassionate, and skilled people I've ever met. I knew little about oncology, but they all took me under their wings and helped me learn. Last summer, the work at the Cancer Center became very personal to me. In July, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was really lucky that the cancer was found early and that it was a type that was easily treated. I wanted the surgeon Dr. Paul Dagger to perform my surgery and remove the tumor. Thankfully, I did not need chemotherapy, but I did need radiation therapy. So last month, while I continued to work in our department, each day I took my turn on the treatment table to receive my radiation. As I went through my treatments, it occurred to me that now that I was now the patient benefiting from the linear accelerator. The perspective from being on the treatment table was just a little bit different um, from being one of the caregivers. I can't say enough about how amazing this care team is. They led me through each step of the process with kindness, compassion, and humor. I had complete confidence in the team, and I knew that my treatment was as expert as I would have found anywhere in the country. Now that I've finished my treatments, I continue to follow up with the great people in the medical oncology department. Everyone, all of the doctors, providers, nurses, MOAs, therapists, all the behind the scenes staff, um, 
that made my cancer cure a truly positive experience. And I take comfort in knowing that this team has given me my best shot at remaining cancer free for the rest of my life. I also know that my experience wasn't better because I was an employee here. I see I see that all around me. I see that the cancer patients here at the center are given the same level of care that we could care for as if they're one of our own family. I want to thank everyone here at the Cancer Center for all the care and support that they give to every patient every day. And I don't want to leave, I'll probably leave some people out, but I want to mention um, my, my uh, physicians, Dr. Anya Sobel and Cynthia Ballinger, and my radiation therapy team, Amy Isaacs, Melanie, and um, there's uh, Katie, um, uh, Jenny. Angela and Angie Gold and Angie, our social worker, uh, Ken, my director and boss, <laughs> Melanie, my uh, my personal advisor, and um, and the behind the scenes people, Holly and um, uh, and Eric and all and so many people, Dana, all the people that work behind the scenes to put together these amazing. And very technical and difficult to understand plans. I just can't thank everybody enough. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Melanie Childers. I am the chaplain and the professional counselor here at the Cancer Center. As many of you know, there are many individuals who have the ornaments uh, here on our tree in their honor or their memory. We've been doing this for a number of years now. And in addition to all the individual names that are already represented on the tree, it is our tradition each year to honor two very special groups of people as we light our tree. We have one ornament that states in memory of and one in honor of. And these two ornaments represent the hundreds of persons who have been treated in our cancer center and the many hundreds of others who are part of our larger community here in the high country. Two individuals have agreed to help us with this ceremony tonight. Magdalena Anubrias came to the United States when she was 20 years old, immigrating from Romania. Everything about her new life was strange and different. The culture, the customs, the language were all difficult to adjust to at first. But she married and raised two children and eventually claimed the United States as her own country. In March of this year, Margarina's breast cancer was found through a mammogram. She reflected that there is no history of any kind of cancer in her family. She believes that stress in the environment may have played a role. And yet, in spite of this, she has maintained a positive attitude through her surgery on April 8th, followed by chemotherapy and radiation treatment. And she continues with regular infusions here at the Cancer Center even now. Although the treatment has been challenging, she stated that the Cancer Center has made her experience more manageable. And we are honored tonight to have Michaelina here with us to hang our ornament in the honor of all survivors. My name is Magdalena Nubria, and I am proud to have been chosen to be part of this ceremony tonight. First, I'd like to remember the ones who are no longer among us. May their memory be eternal. I had to put down a few lines to describe this special place. I hope you won't find my speech too long. I tend to carry on and on. In a few paragraphs, I'd like, like to give you my description of the cancer center, mainly how I feel about it. This is a place in which each patient comes with thin fears and struggles with pain and finds a window 
a real window to the outside world, a world in which the birds continue their songs and the trees change their leaves and mountains rewrite. Inside this place where chairs and peaks and trays with poisons mark their presence everywhere, there are people, professional people, highly trained, patient, kind, humble, selfless, dedicated people. They show endurance, they give hope, they give love. The most important feeling one gets when entering this building is an undisputing sense of humanity, but mainly of love, and because love never fails, love heals. Those who come here need healing. Once a diagnosis of that magnitude shows on your chart, an entire operation is put into motion. Doctors, nurses, staff, volunteers, administration. Then the job begins, and it is carried with love. This has been my experience, an experience of pure humanity, a reassurance that we are linked to one another in good times and in bad times. That's why I will be forever grateful to each and every person here, grateful and thankful, endlessly, quietly, loudly, always. May the patients keep their hope and receive good results in their long and blessed life ahead. May the professionals know that their work is nothing less than miraculous. May this holiday season be a joyous and prosperous one for everybody, as well as the new year to come. You have changed my outlook on life. You have made me see the unseen. You have given me reasons to believe that hope is possible. This is a dramatic break. I will wear a hat when I go out because it is winter. But hats off <laughs> to all the lovely people. May you be rewarded greatly from above. regularly and was followed closely by his oncologist here as well as in Florida. About a year ago, he was entered into a clinical trial that put him into remission within just a few months. But he still was required to travel every few weeks uh, for treatments, which of course weakened his immune system. And this was also during a time when traveling was difficult because of COVID. Tragically, despite his being fully vaccinated, Terry contracted COVID-19 and was hospitalized on August 7th. He died here at the Potter Medical Center on August 23rd. Terry experienced significant career success, but he enjoyed a wide range of activities. He continued serving as a business coach and a mentor for App State students up until right before he died. He was a painter as well as a writer. His most recent book, Switching Gears, was just released on Amazon this very week. But when asked, Terry might likely tell you that his relationships with family and friends were of greatest importance to him. Although Terry's family was unable to be here in person to hang our memorial ornaments tonight, we have a photo of him here with us. And Terry's partner, Bonnie Alter, who is with us virtually on our live stream, shared some comments with me that I will share with you. She says, Terry, was a man who never knew a stranger. He was truly interested in all he met and was a fantastic listener. He loved life and cherished each day. He did not let multiple myeloma get him down. When cancer took away his beloved golf, he took up painting. He even donated some of his paintings to the cancer center. He was such a giving, kind, and compassionate man. Every morning he journaled and ended his journaling with, God, thank you for another day. I was truly blessed to have Terry in my life for the last 20 years. He will be missed so very much by me and everyone who knew him. So Bonnie, I will hang this ornament in memory of Terry and all of those who have died.
this is a wonderful opportunity for us here at the Cancer Center to take a moment to honor all of those who have died because of cancer and all who are living in spite of cancer. And so we celebrate all of these individuals who name, whose names grace the tree and our own hearts as well, because these folks become a part of us. It has been said, it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Cancer has certainly brought on its share of curses, anger, pain, loss, and sadness. But survivors and their families have taught me that no matter what, no amount of cancer can snuff out the light and hope of the human spirit. And so at this time of year, <clears throat> when darkness surrounds us early <clears throat> and the nights are long, let us remember that these are also the times when scars are most easily seen, when warm memories can stir us to loving action, and when we recognize how much we need each other to survive and thrive and find our way through the dark time. We are honored to have Diane Gates lighting our tree this evening. This is the fun part of the day. event this year and for your support of our cancer center here in the high country by last report uh, we have added 71 ornaments this year um, all hand painted and with that uh, pledged 792 dollars to the cancer resource office although we regret that we could not hold this event live and welcome you all here in person where in the past we have enjoyed refreshments and live music and uh, lots of good times with each other. We trust that soon our opportunities to meet together and celebrate each other in person will be restored. For now, we invite you to carry the lights of this evening in your hearts as you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> 